What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another video for you guys today. We've only just hit 10k on Carefree Lewis G, so I want to say big up to all you guys who have subscribed to this channel. I've been p putting consistent content for you guys for the last month and a while and you guys have been enjoying it, so thanks to you guys who have been subscribing, who have been liking, who have been supporting me throughout all of this. And if you guys haven't done so already, hit smash that subscribe button, get rid of all the red from this channel, press the like button as well, and don't forget to smash that bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever I release any new content. Now I'm sorry if I end up sweating during this video because this heat wave is mad and it's going to be like this for the next couple days so just bear with me because the heat is ridiculous. In this video we're going to be going through the Bayern Munich versus Chelsea preview, the game that nobody wants to talk about but the game that we're going to have to sit here and talk about anyway. We'll also talk about a little bit of transfer news. There isn't really much going on today, but there's something to do with Renz and Tamori that we'll discuss a little bit later on in the video. And a little bit on Willian and the inevitable, but it is what it is. We'll go straight into the Bayern Munich versus Chelsea preview. And boy, where do we start on this one? 3-0 down from the first leg back in February before the lockdown happened. I think over 100 days have passed since then, but that scoreline still remains the same and it's still dreadful as hell. We've got how many players out injured? Pedro Pulisic, as the Williams not playing, Gilmore's out, Jorginho, Alonso suspended. Bayern haven't lost since the 11th of January <laughs> and in the entire history of the European Cup and the Champions League no team has ever won by three or more goals in an away game and failed to progress every single time in the 92 times that it's happened the away the team that's got those three away goals have progressed so the odds don't look good for us but the odds never really look good for us when it's against Bayern Munich and we love being the underdog when it comes to European games and let's be real, if you're talking about underdogs, I think this is as close as you're really going to get when it comes to this sort of game. Everything looks against us. In Chelsea's season, for most fans, they're just thinking the season's over after the FA Cup final. This game's just about, let's see what we can do against Bayern, let's see if we can try and go down swinging or try and go down with a much more respectable aggregate score. I know Bayern are also going to be fielding a strong squad because they need to regain fitness. They'll have one eye on the uh, potential semi-final draw next week with, no, semi-final, quarter-final draw with Eva, but uh, Barcelona or Napoli, the other winner of that game as well. And they're going to be fielding a strong squad as well. So this video, like, the title is serious and... You need to sit back, relax, suspend your disbelief a little bit and drink in some optimistic propaganda because that's all this video really is going to be and we can't go into these videos too negative or it's all just going to be depressing or even, or even better if we win, you're just going to look like an idiot. So this is five reasons why Chelsea can beat Bayern Munich. You haven't heard it differently, I mean this shit. Five reasons why Chelsea can beat Bayern Munich. Please just suspend your disbelief for this one. Number one, Bayern haven't played competitively in over a month. Now, they are expected to feel the strong side because of this. I did just say this previously. But with us in a potentially fitter shape than them, maybe we can capitalise on it. They might potentially be more off the pace than we give them credit for. We will be the more fitter side. We will have been in more competitive games. We might have that more bit more of a cutting edge about us and who knows that could go a long way to uh, maybe not deciding the tie maybe we can win the game we could win the game it might be it would be typical fucking Chelsea to do it we bottled the FA Cup final to the worst Arsenal side in years with a 12th man of course and then go and beat Bayern Munich the next week it would be peak Chelsea and you man know that as well so reason number one Bayern Munich haven't played competitively in a month and to be fair we could use that to our advantage Number two, Olivier Giroud. Now, Olivier Giroud has been in amazing form since the return of lockdown with six goals in his last seven games and he even got the assist for Christian Pulisic as well in the FA Cup final, which is a habit that he's starting to make for himself. The assist in the FA Cup finals did it twice for Arsenal, did it once for us as well. He also likes the game against Bayern Munich with three in his last six against the club. None of them were with us, but... There's a first time for everything, isn't there? And Olivier Giroud is the big man for the big occasion. And in a very uncertain sort of Chelsea side with all these injuries, all these suspensions, and barely any understanding of what the lineup could be, we need some of the experience and we also need a player with confidence in himself. And the run of form will give Olivier Giroud bags of confidence. 
and hopefully we can use that to our advantage. Olivier Giroud likes those big games. He, we've seen what his link up with Mason Mount can do. All depends on how he can connect with Hudson Odoi as well because Hudson Odoi probably will be playing and that will move me on to one of the other next points as well in a little bit. But Olivier Drew is our second reason why we could potentially get a result against Bayern Munich because the big man loves the big occasion. Number three, and this all depends on if he's fit because he... This is a maybe. This video is being recorded before Frank Lampard's press conference. So if this player is out, this entire point is just finished. But N'Golo Kante. N'Golo Kante could potentially be back for the game tomorrow. And we saw how much we missed him in the first leg against Bayern Munich. People have been saying, oh, this might be the right time to cash in on N'Golo Kante. And in my opinion, games like Bayern Munich in the first leg showed exactly why we needed him. Because... Jorginho simply getting bypassed during the game and we needed someone that could break up play quickly and someone who's very good at those recovery tackles because Bayern Munich's transition was scary. The way they moved the ball in the first leg, it was so quick, it was so precise and every time it was of danger, it was the passing and it was the movement off the ball as well and we just couldn't really seem like we could cope with it. We hung in there for the first half. Second half, as soon as Asby slipped for Nabry's first goal, the game just fell away from us. So. We need someone in the middle who can break up play very easily. Someone who's a great ball carrier as well. And I think the Kovacic and Kante midfield pairing will be very progressive for us. And that's something that we could try and utilise to our advantage. We'll be honest. Defensively, it might be a bit worrying because both of them prefer to carry the ball forward. Sorry, I just need to switch my camera. Both of them prefer to carry the ball forward and that does leave space in behind. You know, it all just depends on how we set up because Billy Gilmore's out injured and Mateo and Jorginho's suspended as well. So we ain't going to see either of them. So we're probably going to play a two in midfield. Uh, next reason why is... Callum hudson Adoy. Third reason why I was in Golo Kante if I didn't say that already. But fourth reason why, Callum hudson Adoy. And hudson Adoy is a player that is going to be extremely frustrated with the way this season's gone down for him. He started pretty well. Three assists in his first three games back from injury. But that injury has just continued to hurt him mentally. And I think him being trying to come back from injury as well. He's trying to push himself a bit too far. And that's why he's struggled with other injuries as well throughout the season. He's done very well to get 30. Three um, appearances for us this season, but he hasn't had the same involvement and same impact they would have desired to have. And him only playing 12 minutes in the FA Cup final, him being snubbed for Pedro when Pulisic came off injured, that will be eating away at him as well. He's going to be coming into this game against Bayern Munich with a side that against a side that was very interested in him 18 months ago, and now they'll be looking at him like. What really was the fuss all about? He ain't really done much this season. And you got to give him the benefit of the doubt. He has been coming off a very tough injury. And mentally, is a very hard injury to, be, to come back from. So that's why I've been saying all season, give Hudson a doy till the end of this season. And see what he's like next season. But with William and Pedro's departure, even he knows the the standard is only going to raise next season. With Ziyech coming in, with Werner coming in, Havertz potentially coming in, but we know that he is actually coming in. He knows that the potential is going to get harder for him next season and he needs to make an impact now. And this is his best chance to do it. It's his first real chance to do it. And it's also his last chance to do it throughout this, for the rest of the season. This game looks insignificant to Chelsea fans, but to Callum hudson Doy, he has to have a good performance in this game. And he has to make a name for himself and show exactly why. He is the player that we gave that big wage to. And that's been a reason why people have been beating him as well because he demanded those wages and he does need to have the performances that justify those wages. But the injuries have just kept coming at the wrong time for him. Regardless, there is a lot of pressure on hudson Adoy, and I think it's make or break, it's not make or break for him, but it's going to go a long way to decide his place for us at the start of next season compared to where Ziyech, Havertz and Werner are going to be as well. Last point, and this one's a very simple point, there is no pressure on us. There is barely any pressure on us. Bayern have three away goals against us and we need to score a minimum of four goals. This is all on Bayern Munich if we're being really real. If they bottle this, this is on them. If they beat us 1-0 or 2-0, it is what it is. We got slapped 3-0 at home. We got put in a spliff. They have to do it again. Us, if we go in and we make a name for ourselves, who knows? Anything could happen. Like the shirt says, we all know what happened on this big day. Let's hope we've got that game back in our heads as well. We don't want to try and put too much focus on 2012 because if I'm being honest, that's probably why Bayern Munich are desperate to slap us up because regardless of whatever performance they could beat us 10-0 on aggregate or anything like that, 
we still gave them the most embarrassing moment in their entire club's history. So they're going to be desperate to make a point out of it. So we need to go there with our heads switched on as well. Uh, that has been five reasons why Chelsea will beat Bayern Munich. I hope you guys were able to suspend your disbelief for long enough to sit through that video. Little bit of transfer news. Ren's interested in taking Fikayo Tomori on a loan for the season. And to be honest, we've known for a little while that there has been the potential that Tomori could be loaned. Tomori was never really going to be sold compared to Christensen, Zuma or Rudiger and we know that one of those three defenders will be sold but Tomori is more looking for experience. He could still stay at Chelsea, it makes more sense they could go on, a, on loan, I think he could do with a bit more experience and it might feel like a step back for him but it all depends on how he takes it and it all depends on how he is mentally because he won player of the year for Derby for a reason, he is a quality defender, we have seen it in phases this season. And I think he just needs a regular run in a football team to start and have that consistency about him because he had struggled with consistency for us this season. It's the same thing for all of our centre-backs. So maybe a loan would be best for him. I'd prefer to see him loan to a Premier League club, but Renz, I think, are, a Champions League, are in the Champions League places. So if it is, wouldn't be the worst of clubs for him. Only other piece of news that William doesn't travel to Munich. So if we get knocked out, that is his last game for the club. Uh, wasn't in the FA Cup final, but that was whenever his last game was, it was his last appearance for us. And probably not going to see him in a Chelsea shirt anytime soon. But bar that, that is the end of this video. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my points. I think I'm going to have a lot of people disagreeing, but it is what it is. I'm trying to be optimistic, just allow me in it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Take care and peace. Let's hope we beat Bayern Munich. Come on, up the Chelsea.